Hi, I'm Michelle from Tell Muchly Paper Blooms, and today I'm going to show you how to make eucalyptus stems from crepe paper. So you can see behind me, I actually have three different types of eucalyptus stem, and I'm going to have tutorials for all three of these. The silver dollar, which is this one at the back, and um, this one I already have the tutorial for, and that's live on the channel now. I will link that above and below for you. And then this one here is the baby blue eucalyptus, which is the one I'm going to do the tutorial for today. So keep watching to learn how to make this one. And then finally, the one at the back, the Stigeriana, that will have a tutorial coming very soon. So that will be coming after this one, but I will come back and add a link above and below for you once that goes live. So make sure that you are subscribed to my channel so that you do get a notification. And you can also join my email list so that you do get an email when that goes live as well. So for all three eucalyptus stems, I do have templates available so that you can make them from those. They're available individually, so you can just buy the specific stem that you're looking for. Or if you want to give all three a go, then I do have a bundle which gets you a 20% discount. So it's worth buying it as a bundle. So my eucalyptus bundle templates are already available on my website. I will drop a link in the description box below for you so that you can go ahead and get those now. And as I say, it does make sense to get the bundle rather than individually because you'll save money. I also just wanted to let you know about my VIP B pass, which is great if you're looking to get quite a few templates. So it obviously includes all of these templates here, plus all of my current paper flower templates and any that I launch in the future. So it's basically access to all of my paper flower templates. So at the moment, the VIP B pass is available as a discounted rate. The price will be going up as soon as I launch more templates. It's discounted because there's less available right now, but obviously that will change in the future. I'm launching more and more templates all the time. So if you do want to get the best value for your paper flower templates, that's the way to do it and buy it sooner rather than later so that you get the best price. So I'll also pop a link for that in the description box as well. So let's get on with making our paper eucalyptus. This one's actually a very straightforward one and you don't need that many materials, which is great. Obviously you'll be able to see straight away, there's only actually one wire involved, which is great. This is an 18 gauge wire. And then there are quite a lot of leaves involved. However, they're all very simple shapes. There's no wire within each of the leaves. So it's quite a quick and easy make this one, but it has a lot of impact. And obviously it's a very tall stem as well. So generally wires come in about 18 inch height. So this is the full 18 inch height wire. So I haven't trimmed this at all. You obviously can if you want to, but this stem is generally quite a tall one. So it's really good for adding height to your display. So if you've got a bouquet and you just wanna add a bit more something to add height to it or variety, if all your flowers are looking very samey in terms of their heights, this is the perfect way to have something like sticking up out of the top of your display. And as I say, because it's quick to make, you can easily add five or six or seven stems sticking out of your bouquet and completely change the look of it. And then the other thing that I really like about it is it looks brilliant just on its own as well. So, you know, this is just an old bottle. I think it's actually an olive oil bottle but just two stems in there looks great. And so you can very easily create a display without spending much money or much time. And that's gonna look fantastic wherever you put it. So it doesn't have to be complicated, it doesn't have to be expensive or time consuming. So this is a great way of doing that. And that's one of the reasons I really love this stem. So if you did watch my Silver Dollar Eucalyptus video, you'll know that I dyed the crepe paper. And again, I highly recommend that you do the same thing here. It makes such a difference to making your stems look realistic. And it's very easy to do, it's just one extra little step. So for all three of these stems, I have tried to keep the materials the same, partly to limit how many materials you're gonna have to buy, but also just to make it easier. And you know, I, I found the color that works, so why would we change that? So let's get into making it. So as I say, you'll need a template to get started and you can get that from tarmuchleepaperblooms.com. You'll need some white crepe paper, and I recommend the heavyweight German. You'll need some scissors, the ones with the fine point are the best ones. Personally, I really like these ones, which are less work on your hands because they have the spring action. You'll need one 18 gauge wire in at least 18 inches long. You'll need some brown floral tape and then either some cocktail sticks or toothpicks so that you can apply your glue. You'll also want some tacky glue, I particularly like the Aileen's tacky glue, but I also then recommend you decan that into a small pot. Tacky glue works best when it's been exposed to the air for a little bit, so this works really well that you can decant a small amount of glue, but you don't have to do the whole bottle. To dye your crepe paper, you'll need some isopropyl alcohol, 
So this is just the stuff that you can get from most pharmacies or grocery stores or supermarkets. And you don't need such a big bottle as this, it's just generally that's what they come in. And then you also want some alcohol inks. I will link the colours below that I'm using here. You basically want a forest green and then a few different shades of blue. And then I recommend you get a mop paintbrush, so basically a big fluffy paintbrush just to make your life easier when you're dyeing your paper. You can do it with a smaller paintbrush, it will just take you a very long time. So one of these bigger ones is best. And you'll also want a jar or pot to mix your ink in. And then you'll want some pan pastel in a dark green and a sponge to apply that with. And again, I will link the colour I'm using down below. And then you also want something to protect your workspace. So I like to use a kitchen towel or paper towel when I'm using my pan pastel because it stops the dust from spreading around. And then I also use cling film or plastic wrap for underneath my paper when I'm doing alcohol inks as well. So for dyeing the crepe paper for this, it's exactly the same as I did for the silver dollar, except I added more blue to this one. So the baby blue eucalyptus is more of a blue colour. It's not as green as the, the silver dollar or any of the other eucalyptus stems. And like I said last time, Start off gradually and build up the colour. Don't just start with a dark colour and then hope it's right straight off the bat. It's best to start with a few more diluted washes and then build up the colour and that way you're going to get the colour that you want a lot easier and waste a lot less paper. So to dye your paper, start by protecting your workspace. Like I said, I like to use cling film and I just overlap that. And then you want to stretch your crepe paper out fully, so pull that tight between your thumbs and your fingers and pull that as far as it will go left to right. Just smooth that down and arrange it onto your workspace. And then take your jar and put a small amount of the isopropyl alcohol into the bottom of that. I then add a little bit of each of the colours. I'll make a note in the description box below of exactly how many drops of each colour I use. But it's not an exact science. If you want to add more or less than you can do to get the colour you prefer. And obviously it's going to be diluted by the isopropyl alcohol. So just bear that in mind when you're working. And like I said previously, start gradually and you can always add more if it's not quite right. And then using the fluffy brush, you just need to brush that all over the paper and make sure it's nice and blended. Try not to add too much ink in one go. If you do find that you need to add more layers, make sure to let it dry a little bit in between each layer. And then once you're happy with the colour, just let it dry fully before you continue. So you can cut out your leaves in one of two ways. You can either cut them by hand or you can cut them out using a cutting machine. So the cutting machine that I'm using here is the Cricut Maker and again I'll pop a link for that below. But this should work with any cutting machine. So when you're downloading your template you have the option to download either an SVG file which is the one you'll use with a cutting machine or a PDF file which is if you want to cut it by hand. So if you do download the SDV file type for a cutting machine, you'll also get the PDF included just for reference. And if you are cutting by hand, you don't need to download the SDV file, it's kind of useless to you if you're not using a cutting machine and all the information is in the PDF file. Before you start cutting your leaves, you need to stretch the paper out all of the way and that is going to apply whether it's for the cutting machine or by hand, you want fully stretched crepe paper for this. So I've talked before in previous videos about whether you should or shouldn't use a cutting machine for your paper flowers and it is very case specific, it depends what you're making. So for something like the baby blue eucalyptus, I actually do recommend that if you have access to one you give it a try because the small leaves can be very, very fiddly. So it's actually a lot quicker for something like this when they're so small to use a cutting machine than it is to cut them by hand. Now that's not to say that you absolutely have to go and get a cutting machine. If you don't have one and don't have access to one, then you, you can absolutely do this by hand. It's just something that will speed up the process for you and make life a little bit easier, that's all. So I'll show you both ways anyway so that you can see. So this option is using the SVG file and that's set up ready to go to cut you out enough leaves for one of these branches. You can obviously make as many as you want from that, you can just duplicate it.
or if you prefer then you can cut them by hand. Now if you are going to cut them by hand there's a few things that I recommend. So it's a lot quicker and actually easier if you fold your paper over so that you're cutting multiple layers at once. So you can do as many layers as you like, just make sure you've got sharp scissors. I usually try and do three, four or five leaves at a time. One of the good things about cutting by hand that you won't get with a cutting machine is that you can actually use up all your scraps of crepe paper. So for example, this piece has some little bits missing at the side and that's not a problem by hand. So first of all, when you get your template from the PDF file, just print that on your home printer and you can just do that onto regular paper. And then I do recommend you trace around that onto cardstock just to make your template a bit thicker and more durable so it's easier to work with. You obviously can print that directly onto cardstock if your printer will let you, but a lot of them don't. So once you have your template, go ahead and cut out all of your leaves in one go. Now this one is actually unique in that the grain lines of the paper run top to bottom on this leaf. You'll probably notice that for most of my templates the leaves have a V shape in them and that's created using two separate halves of a leaf. For this one we're not doing that, it would become far too fiddly and it's also not necessary because normally we use the grain line direction to emphasise the V shape of a leaf but with this particular leaf you don't actually get that, it's more of just a smooth finish so it's kind of irrelevant. So there's no need to add that extra bit of detail because it, it wouldn't be natural anyway. So once you've cut out all of your petals, whichever way you choose to do that, you want to add the next layer of detail and that's going to be using the pan pastels. So all we're going to do in a nutshell is add a very small amount of dark green pan pastel to the edge of each leaf. So the key to doing this is to start gradually and build it up. You don't need very much pan pastel at all to make an impact, so just start slowly with it. When you're starting on the small leaves, it's going to be quite difficult to just do the edge of the leaf because obviously they're very small. So if you do end up covering the whole leaf, that's fine, don't worry about it. Just don't put quite as much pastel on it then. But as you get to the bigger leaves, you can start to just do the very edges so that you get variation in the colour of the leaf as well. And when you're doing it, make sure that you do both sides because you will see the underside of the leaf later on. And this is where I use the paper towel because obviously there's a bit of dust that gets created by using pastels. And this actually helps to just catch all of the dust and stop it spreading around your workspace. So once you've done all of your leaves, you can then go ahead and curl them all. And again, I recommend you do them all in one go. And it's very straightforward for curling these. They're all the same. You just want to get a slight curve on the leaf. So you want to stretch it left to right using your thumb so that it gets the curve left to right. And then you can just smooth it with your thumb and your finger to get the curve in the other direction as well, so top to bottom. So because we've already stretched the crepe paper, it shouldn't stretch very much whilst you're doing this, which is exactly what you want. You just want like a slight curve on there, nothing too extreme. So the next step is to completely cover the floral wire with the floral tape. So you just need to stretch the first bit of the floral tape and then add a little bit of glue onto that. You want to wrap the whole thing, so I find it easier to start at one end about an inch from the end and then wrap the tape up to the end to create a bit of a fold over on the very edge of the wire and then wrap back down over the bit that you've just done and go all the way to the end. Make sure to add glue every so often as well to make sure it's nice and secure and pull the tape really tight as you work. And then to add your leaves, you want to add a small blob of tacky glue onto the tab on the bottom of the leaf. So we're going to start with the smallest leaves first of all. And you'll see there's a little square tab at the bottom. So that bit can be completely covered in glue. As I said before, it is best if your glue has been exposed to the air a little bit because it makes it even more tacky. So it, it's easier to work with, it grips everything a bit better and it also doesn't take quite so long to dry. So if you do have brand new glue, just leave the lid off this part for about half an hour or so before you start working with it and then the top bit will be more tacky. So we're starting with the smallest leaves that you have and the first two are going to go right on the very end of the wire. So we're putting the glue on the front face of the leaf and that's then going to curve out from the top of the wire. So when you add the first leaf, 
you want to position it so that the wire goes slightly below the top of the tab. And so then when you pinch the tab around the leaf, it will start to hide the wire. And then we're going to do the same thing with the next leaf and line it up in the same position as this one. And again, push them slightly above the top of the wire so that you don't see the wire for these ones. Getting these two leaves in the right place is actually the trickiest part. So just take your time with this bit. Then you want to cut a small piece of floral tape and add some glue to that and just cover the bottom of the tab so that you don't see it. So that we're just covering the stem here just to hide what we've just done. And using the tape actually works as quite a good guide for your distances. So when you wrap the floral tape around the stem to cover the base of the leaf above, that's going to give you a guide on the height. And so when you add your next leaves, they'll sit around about the bottom of that tape. So the top of the tab will line up with the bottom of the tape. And in terms of positioning, you're going to do exactly the same thing, except obviously we're not worrying about covering the wire this time. And you want to rotate them 90 degrees from the previous ones. So they'll basically be staggered as you work your way down. Some will be in one direction. So in terms of a clock, let's say they'll be at 12 and 6. And then the next set will be at three and nine. And then obviously we'll just keep working like that. So it'll be 12 and six, three and nine, 12 and six, three and nine, etc. And adding the rest of the leaves is very straightforward. It's just the same process all the way down. So you start with your smallest leaves and you work your way up all the way through to the biggest leaves at the bottom. Between each pair of leaves, obviously make sure to cover the base of the leaf with the floral tape and then add your next pair rotating as you go. And do that all the way down to the bottom. Now you might find it gets tricky to get your floral tape up to the underside of the leaf above. So if you do find that, you can actually use the scissors to push that up. So this is one of the benefits of having this pointed pair of scissors because you can actually use them to just push that floral tape into place where you might not be able to get with your fingers. And as you add each pair of leaves, just pinch those into place just to make sure that the glue is fully set. Now don't worry too much if the leaves rotate as you're working because as long as the glue hasn't completely dried you can go back in and adjust the positions of those later.
And then the final step is just to finish off the stem by wrapping it in the floral tape. Now obviously you've already got floral tape on the stem, so if you're using a vase where you won't actually see the rest of the stem you don't need to worry too much about this. But if you are using something that you will see the rest of the stem, I do recommend you just thicken it up by adding a few more layers of the floral tape. You obviously need to cover the base of the bottom leaf, so I recommend you just add another layer of the floral tape here just to add a little bit more thickness and to make it look more realistic. And obviously make sure to add some glue at the bottom of the floral tape to finish it off and make sure it's fully attached. So moving on to the finishing touches, you just want to add a slight curve onto the wire. It can be a bit fiddly to do this, but the easiest way is if you pinch between the leaves, so between the pairs of leaves, just gently bend that a little bit and then do the same a few leaves over. Work your way along the stem until you've got a nice gentle curve on that. It's also a good time now to tweak and adjust your leaves if any of them have moved out of position as you've been working. If you tweak them now before the glue dries, then they should stay in place. And once you're happy with the positions, then I recommend you stand them up in a pot or a vase until it's completely dry, and then they won't move around after that. So there we go, hopefully you now have a beautiful paper eucalyptus stem and you're going to go ahead and hopefully make lots more of them too. So if you do make any and you're happy to share them then please tag me on Instagram, it's tarmuchley underscore paperblooms and also you can email your photos to me at blooms at tarmuchley.com. If you're happy for me to share them then please do let me know because I do love to share them with the wider paper flower community and I'm also in the process of adding some updates to my website and I'm hoping to feature some more custom images on there as well. So if you want to be featured on there then please Please let me know and send me your images I'd love to see them. If you have any questions then drop them in the comment box below or send me an email and I'll do my best to help you as well. Until next time, happy flower making!